Hi friends, it's Miss Diane from the Ridgefield Library. Great to see you again. I brought my friend Henry. Henry's a sloth, you know, and sloths are very slow when they read and when they listen. So I bring Henry to my story times to remind me I don't read too fast and that you get to, to enjoy the stories. So today, let's sing the song, The More We Get Together, because we love to get together, make new friends, even when we can't be at the library, right? The more we get together, 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 more we get together, the happier we'll be, because your friends are my friends, my friends are your friends, more we get together, the happier we'll be. Hey, everybody knows that song, right? Yay! But do you know how to sign that song to sing it with your fingers while you sing it with your voices? So take your fingers together and touch them like this. And this means more. A little baby might do that if he wants more, more milk to drink, more. Make two fists, put them together. That means together. And when your heart feels like a butterfly, it flutters too. That means happy. That means happy. You and I are friends. We'll put our friends together. Okay? And sing the song. It goes like this. The more we get together, 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 more we get together, happier we'll be because your friends are my friends. My friends are your friends. More we get together, happier we'll be. Are you happy today, Henry? I'm happy today. I'm always happy when I can see you, even if it, it isn't like face to face, we call it. But I know you're there. I know you're there watching. Today, I saw my first butterfly. I'm celebrating today. It was a happy day. And I thought I'd read my two favorite butterfly stories to you and one I know you know and the other one you may not know and if you stay with me to the very end today um, I'm going to do a craft that you can do at home making a butterfly okay <clears throat> so the very hungry caterpillar I think this book is everybody's favorite is it yours favorite is it your favorite too Henry I think so especially if I read it slowly right the very hungry caterpillar Eric Carl is the author and he made all of his pictures. You know how he made them? He made them by painting on paper and then cutting them up and putting the papers together. And that's called collage. So he didn't draw them really. He just kind of cut them out. Oh, <laughs> look at all those holes and all those pieces of paper. But it looks like there's been a very hungry caterpillar on these inner pages, don't, doesn't it? It looks like the caterpillar is eating up all of the pages in the book. The very hungry caterpillar. Look what he did with all those those dots he cut out. Eric Carl, he put them all together. What a pretty, pretty beginning to a, a very pretty story. <clears throat> There's the sun. All plants and creatures need the sun, don't they? Just like you and I. We all need the sun. Well, <clears throat> in the light of the moon, and this is the moon, a little leg, egg, a little egg lay on a leaf. There's the man in the moon, you see. They say there's a man's face when you look at the moon, right? Well, on Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. They must be so hungry when they come out of the egg. And he started to look for some food. And here are some of the first foods he found, right? On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. And the fun thing about this book, the holes in the pages and the sizes of the pages. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, one, two, but he was still hungry. And after Tuesday comes Wednesday. So on Wednesday, he, he ate, what are these? Plums, purple plums. One, two, three plums. He ate holes in those. <gasps> but he was still hungry. So that was Wednesday. 
the day after Wednesday is Thursday. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. One, two, three, four. Oh boy, those look good. I'd love one of those today. But he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges. One, two, three, four, five. And look at the hose. But he was still hungry. <gasps> this is the crazy day. On Saturday, he ate one piece of chocolate cake. Oh, you can't see it. There it is. One piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, a, a lollipop, a piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and a piece, slice of watermelon. He ate all of these things. Now, you know if you ate all of those things, you might not feel well, right? And he was very small, you know. And that is just what happened to him. That night, he had a stomach ache. There he is. And he has a frown because his tummy hurts so much. His stomach ache hurts so much. So he decided maybe those weren't things a caterpillar should eat after all. So the next day was Sunday again. And the caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And look, he ate many holes in that same leaf. And you know, after that, he felt much better. Do you see his face? I think he actually has a little smile. Well, now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a caterpillar anymore. He, was, he wasn't a little caterpillar, I should say. He was a big, fat caterpillar. Look how big and fat. And he built a small house. Now, some people call it a cocoon, and some people call it a chrysalis. And he, he built this around himself, and he stayed inside for more than two weeks. And inside, he was very busy, but nobody could see. And he nibbled a hole in, in the cocoon, and he pushed his way out. And you know, the surprise ending, which probably isn't a surprise, he was a beautiful caterpillar. How do you think he felt? Do you think when he went into that cocoon or chrysalis, do you think he knew he was going to be a butterfly? He must be so proud of himself. I just love the colors. I just love the colors. And that's the end of the story. Now, you know that's not the end for him, right? He's going to be very, very busy from now on. <clears throat> he's going to go from flower to flower and, and, and eat nectar. And I think he's going to have a pretty good time because he loves sunny days. But that's the end of the book story, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Well, I, th I thought we should sing a song about being happy since Caterpillar was, was obviously happy. He was happy when... When he ate the right things and when he became a butterfly, I'm sure he was very, very, very happy. But let's think about creepy crawly things. There's other little insects outside, right? There's not just caterpillars and butterflies. Um, maybe you can think of some to, to, to imitate. But let's, let's think about the story. And you know the song Happy and You Know It. So let's do what kids do. First we'll clap our hands and then we'll do things like the creatures um, outside, okay? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now, if you're a caterpillar and you're hungry, or mean happy, or hungry, you'd eat. They eat. That's all they do is eat. They crawl a little bit, but they eat. So let's, let's do some munching, okay? If you're a caterpillar and you know it, you can munch. If you're a caterpillar and you know it, you can munch. If you're a caterpillar and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a caterpillar and you know it, you can munch. I made a slurp. I must be eating watermelon, right? All right. What if you're a butterfly and you're happy? You can fly, right? You can fly from here to there and back again. You ready? If you're a butterfly and you know it, you can fly. You can get up and move around the room if you want. If you're a butterfly and you know it, you can fly. If you're a butterfly and you know it, and you really want to show it, a butterfly and you know it, you can fly. Beautiful flying, everybody. Beautiful wings. They're so pretty. What if, if um, 
you're some other creature outside. What what a spot a spider. Like itsy bitsy, he climbs, doesn't he? Climbs right up his web, right? You can climb. If you're a spider and you know it, you can climb. If you're a spider and you know it, you can climb. If you're a spider and you know it, and you really want to show it, a spider and you know it, you can climb. Woo, itsy bitsy, up the water spout he goes, right? What about a worm? They do some wiggling, don't they? They can't crawl like a caterpillar. They don't have legs. They have to squirm around. They squirm. We'll call it squirming, okay? If you're a worm and you know it, you can squirm. If you're a worm and you know it, you can squirm. If you're a worm and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a worm and you know it, you can squirm. What about a frog? Last of this to be a frog. You have you've a few choices if you want. You can jump or you can croak, or you can say ribbit, whatever you want to do. I'm, I can't jump, I need to sit in my chair, but I guess I'll croak. If you're a frog and you know it, you can croak. If you're a frog and you know it, you can croak. croak. If you're a frog and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're a frog and you know it, you can croak. Croak, croak, croak. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. I think I like ribbit better. <laughs> hey, go back to being a kid, shout hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. <laughs> oh, whew, I'm glad you're happy too. I have another favorite story. And this one's about a caterpillar, but it's very different. It also has another um, creature in there. There's a the caterpillar. She's wearing a little scarf on her head. This is called the caterpillar and the polywog. So this creature, this little guy, he's called a polywog. And a polywog is also called a tadpole. It's the same thing. Some people like to say polywog. Some people like to say tadpole. So in this story, they like to say polywog. So every time I say polywog, you think tadpole because that's what it is, okay? This is called the caterpillar and the polywog. It was written by Jack Kent. And this is about a very, very, very happy caterpillar who's very proud of herself and a polywog who's not quite so sure what he's going to be first of all first of all caterpillars aren't like other folks they're not like you and they're not me caterpillars and they're not other like other animals like ducks and hippopotamuses when we get older we get bigger especially a hippopotamus he gets really big right but not caterpillars. When they get older, they don't grow up and look bigger. Well, they get a little bigger, but they don't grow up like us. They turn into butterflies, and you know that. Here's some other butterfly shapes. They pretty? Turning into something else like that is not just something anybody can do. So, down by the pond, there lived a caterpillar. And there she is, who was very proud of being different. And she bragged about it to her friends. And she said, when I grow up, she said, I'm going to turn into something else. She was bragging. And that's what she said to the snail. And you know what the snail said? The snail said, that's nice. And the snail really didn't care one way or the other. Next, she was bragging to the turtle. And she said, when I grow up, I'm going to turn into something else. And he said, remember, he's slow. He's slow like my friend Henry. The turtle said, I don't blame you. Because he didn't, he didn't like wiggly things. Then she said to the pollywog, here's the pollywog. She said, when I grow up, I'm going to turn into something else, she said. And the pollywog said, oh, what fun. What are you going to turn into? But she didn't answer. She was so busy bragging. She just walked away to go tell someone else. The little pollywog, he was thinking, he said, I wish I could turn into something else when I grow up. Well, the fish heard him say that, and the fish said, You will, said the fish. All pollywogs do. And he said, Oh, what am I going to turn into? But the fish saw a fly and looked and swam away and didn't answer. That poor pollywog, he doesn't know what he's going to turn into. Well, here's that bragging caterpillar again. She says, 
when I grow up, she said, when I grow up, she says, I'm going to turn into something else. And the pollywog said, so am I, said the pollywog. And the caterpillar said, you? She was so surprised, she almost fell into the pond. Oh, yes, said the pollywog. The fish said so. They go to school. They're very smart. Well, the caterpillar was very upset. She thought only caterpillars could do that. And she sat there very sadly. And the little pollywog said, what are we going to turn into, he said. And she said, well, I, she said, I am going to turn into a beautiful butterfly. And the little pollywog said, then I guess I will too, he said. What fun, let's do it together. Oh, all right, said the caterpillar, but I get to go first. The pollywog didn't mind because he didn't know how to do it. He wasn't so sure how it was done. He said, okay, I'll watch you. So the caterpillar went up into a tree she spun her, you could call it a cat cocoon or a chrysalis. And she said, oh my, this is the tricky part. And here she is, she's spinning it. And she's going to stay in there for a while. And the pollywog watched as the caterpillar spun and only her head was uncovered. And she said, okay, bye-bye. Now I have to close the lid. When I come out, I'll look like a butterfly. And she closed it up tight. He said, go ahead, I want to see you do it. And she says, it'll take a while, said the caterpillar. And then she was out of sight. She was out of sight. Mm -hmm. So for days and days and days, the pollywog waited. And while he waited, look at how he's changing. First, I see a very long tail. Now I see a very short tail, don't you? What other changes could be happening? Keep watching. At last, there was some activity in the, there was some activity, meaning shaking around, in the cocoon, and the end of it opened up, and very, very slowly, the caterpillar turned into the butterfly, and the butterfly crawled out. Isn't she big? But she wasn't a caterpillar. She was a butterfly, a beautiful yellow butterfly. Well, the pollywog, he was so excited. He hopped up and down. <gasps> he hopped up and down. He couldn't hop before. He was so surprised. He said, I was so busy watching you, he said. I didn't notice what was happening to me. And the butterfly saw him and she said, you're a very handsome frog, the butterfly said as he flew off, as she flew off to get her new wings. But the frog, he was kind of puzzled. He, he was still very surprised. He said, oh, I thought I was going to be a butterfly, he said. <laughs> Wasn't that silly? He didn't know. Well, another caterpillar came along and wiggled by and said, when I grow up, I'm going to be something else. And you know what the frog said? The frog wasn't listening at all. The frog was looking at his reflection in the water. He was admiring it. He thought he looked pretty handsome. He said, I am, you know, a very handsome frog. <laughs> Do you think he's happy and he knows it? Was he a little disappointed when he wasn't a butterfly? Yes, a little bit, but I think he's happy and he knows it. Don't you? I brought our friend Frog. <laughs> I brought the wide mouth Frog for a minute because I have some questions for him. This is wide mouth Frog, he's my friend. Have you ever met Henry? Hi, Henry. <laughs> I don't think they've ever met before, but wide mouth Frog lives in a pond and he was once a polywog or we'll call it a tadpole. So I want to ask him some questions. So White Mouth Frog, when you were when you were just a tadpole swimming in the pond, did you know you were gonna turn into a frog? No, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was happy swimming. Well, what did you think when you were able to jump out of the pond and jump on the land and do do things like children do on the land, like hop and skip and jump? I was so happy and so proud. 
So Frog, do you ever go back in the water? I can do both. I can swim in the water and I can play on land. Just like kids. You must be a very, very happy frog. Are you happy, Ribbit? I think that means yes. You are very handsome. I know. <laughs> and you're very proud too. Well, anyway, Frog, I'm so glad that uh, you were happy when, when you turned into a frog. That would be terrible if you didn't like it at all and you still wanted to be a butterfly, right? So, friends, I have a craft for you um, to make a butterfly. So stay with me. Mm -hmm. Hi, friends. Now I'd like to show you how to make that, that butterfly. That almost looks like it's flying, doesn't it? When you wave its wings. Very easy to make. Take a piece of paper. I had yellow. You can use white. You can use any light color because we're going to decorate it and make it very colorful. And you're going to fold the paper in half and fold it just so because there's something special about a butterfly. A butterfly is the same on one side as it is on the other. And the word that means that is called symmetrical. Symmetrical means what you see on one side, you do exactly the same thing on the other side when you're coloring. And that's why there's one red dot on this side, one red dot here, one dot here, one dot here. It's symmetrical. Whatever you see on one side of a butterfly, you will see the same thing on the other side, on the wings on the other side. So think about that. So, so to make it symmetrical, we're going to fold the paper in half. So when we cut it, one side will be exactly like the other. So I folded it up. I'm going to sketch a little what might look like a butterfly. You can make yours so different. Certainly doesn't have to look like my butterfly. <clears throat> so that's kind of like a very big shape for the butterfly. This is going to be its body. This is only half of it. When we cut and open it up, when we open it up later, it will be a whole butterfly. That's only half of the butterfly. So you'll need a pair of scissors and you'll cut on your lines. And while I'm cutting, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what colors I might use to make my butterfly. Be sure an adult helps you cut so you don't, so it doesn't fall into two pieces. You cannot cut on the fold. The fold you leave folded and you cut on the open side. This side was the where the fold was and this side was the open side. So when I open it up, look what happens. There is that butterfly shape. And this is the long skinny part. This is body. And these are his two symmetrical wings. Look, they're shaped exactly the same, aren't they? This one looks just like this one. So when we color them, we have to remember to make one look just like the other. So you don't have to watch me color mine. I'll do a, a, a little bit of it now and a little bit of it later. But on this wing, I put two, two spots, so I'm going to put those same two spots on the other side to make it symmetrical. And the body is down the middle, so you might want to trace it a little bit, whoops, so you don't confuse it with the wings. And maybe give him a couple little eyes and maybe he's happy, give him a smile. <laughs> and then decide how, how many more colors you would like to add. So you decorate your butterfly and whatever you do on this side, you'll do on this side. I'll show you mine again that I made earlier. So I put some splotches of green here and one there and some other little spots here and some there. But you have fun. You do whatever you'd like to do. And let me show you the way to make him fly. Now to make your butterfly fly, fold him back up again. And with your scissors, you'll very carefully, let me show you this, 
very carefully. See those two little lines I made? And it's all folded up. You very carefully cut with your scissors just a little bit on those two lines. Let me show you. You see how I have it cut out there? Very little bit. When you open it up, there will be a slit. There will be a slit in your paper. And in that slit, you can put, this is a skewer. You can, uh, sometimes in the library, I use drinking straws. That will work well too. You put it in and out like that, in and out. And you get a good piece of tape. Clear tape will do. I'm going to use colored tape so you can see it. But clear tape will work just fine. And I put a little tape, this is on the back now. I put a little tape and turn it over and I'm ready for my butterfly to fly. But he's really not finished being decorated, is he? But now he can fly. And really, it is so soft. Look at those wings. It looks just like a real butterfly in flight. So I hope you try it at home. I hope you, you make a uh, very hungry caterpillar butterfly if you'd like. Maybe you want to want to make it bright colors like like that picture book let me remind you what the butterfly looked like look at that look at these colors you can add as many colors as you'd like but you make it your own and try to remember that word symmetrical that one side is like the other <clears throat> maybe butterfly can help me wave goodbye today bye friends it's time to say goodbye it's time to say goodbye we had some fun and now we're done time to say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, butterfly. Bye, friends. Look for butterflies today. I've seen my first one. Maybe you will too. Farewell.